Hello, mathematicians. I wanted to share a book with you about measuring. So we have been learning about all kinds of measuring recently, about how long things are, how much things weigh, the weight, the length. So I have a fun book I'd like to share with you. It's called Millions to Measure. And it is by David M. Schwartz. Pictures by Stephen Kellogg. <laughs> Let's race all the way down the beach. Ready, set. Ooh, there's a boat right there. Hold on, that's too far. No, it's not far enough. Well, how far is it? Let's ask Marvelissimo the Mathematical Magician. We need answers. Climb aboard. Millions to measure. Oh, there they go. There are millions of things and many ways to measure. Let's fly back in time and see how people measured many years ago. When prehistoric people held a race, they had to think about distance. Ready, set, hold on, how far should we run? They wanted to know about size and weight. Dad, how tall am I? Ma, how heavy is my little hog? Traders had questions about volume. How much juice will fit in, the ju in that jug? A bright idea was needed. Ready, set measure. We'll use our feet. And so people use their feet to measure distance. It's 1,000 feet to that rock. Ready, set, go! But measuring in feet could cause confusion. You, my boy, are four feet tall. My dad says, I am four feet tall. No way, I am three feet tall. Hmm, I wonder why they're different heights. What do you think? Yes, because feet come in different sizes. Measured by my mom's humongous feet, you are only two feet tall. Yeah, so it depends on whose feet you're using. To measure weight, people used stones. My darling hog weighs 50 stones. But stones come in different sizes. My huggable hippo also weighs 50 stones. Huh? They both weigh 50 stones, but look at the size of the stones. These probably weigh much more, don't they? How many seeds could a container hold? That's one way volume was measured. And volume means how much a container can hold, the capacity of a container. But some seeds are tiny and others are huge. So once again, measurements could mean mix-ups. 841, 842, 843, 844. And he's counting, oh my goodness, he's all the way up to 200,003. Oh, there must be a better way. I'm just counting seeds. Time for another bright idea. Let's fly forward in time. Here we go. Kings, queens, sultans, sheiks, and chiefs solved the problem of measuring with feet of different sizes. From now on, they declared, only one foot would be used throughout the land. Hear ye, hear ye, behold the royal foot. Where is this foot? Foot length rulers were made. See that my subjects measure with nothing else. So they're using the king's foot. Standards were also set for weight and volume. This iron block weighs one pound. Use this pound and no other. Today we weigh our queen mother. She looks very happy, doesn't she? <laughs> Behold the royal cup. 
All volume shall be measured with this size cup and no other. One cup of mustard on the royal hot dog. That's a lot of mustard. Two cups of pepperoni on the royal pizza. But what happened when people from faraway lands worked together? It was hard to decide which ruler's ruler would rule. Let's make bicycles. This is a three-foot wheel from West Slovakia. Well, this is a three-foot wheel from East Indonesia. Your queen must have tiny feet. Gradually, people began to use the same ruler, no matter who their ruler happened to be. Now a foot was a foot, whether you lived in East Indonesia or West Slovakia. I'll race you to the border. Ready, set, go. Here is the kind of ruler we use in the U.S. We in the U.S. use today. The green snake is one foot in length. So there's the green snake, one foot in length. We know one foot is the same as 12 inches. To measure something smaller than a foot, we use inches. A foot is divided into 12 inches. The pencil is three inches long. Starting at the zero mark, one, two, three inches long. If you want to be very accurate, use fractions of an inch. You could measure to the half inch, quarter of an inch, and so on. There's this little tiny worm thing. No matter how I stretch and squirm, I still remain a half inch worm. Little worm is <laughs> half an inch, halfway between zero and one. To measure something larger than a foot, you can use yards. There are three feet in one yard. Ooh, we know about yards, don't we? So here is one yard. It is the same as one, two, three feet. In other words, you could think of this as a ruler, second ruler, third ruler, three rulers put together. All right, check the chart. Moonbeam is about a yard high. Not counting her horn. <laughs> is that a unicorn? All right, let's see. One inch on the chart represents or equals one foot in real life. Hmm. We measure longer distances in miles. One mile is 5,280 feet. Mount Everest, the world's tallest peak, is about 29,000 feet or 9,700 yards or about five and a half miles high. Marvelissimo, look at that humongous hippo. How much do you think it weighs? Let's find out. We usually measure weight in pounds. Jello weighs eight pounds. Robert weighs 65 pounds. So does Sandro. Oh, I guess this kitty's name is Jello. Weighs eight pounds. Robert, 65, and Sandro, also 65. However, if Sandro grows up to be an Olympic heavyweight wrestler, he might weigh 260 pounds. Mm -hmm. Wow, go for the gold. But Sandro would be a pushover for Hercule Hercules, the huggable hippo, whose weight is figured in tons. A ton is 2,000 pounds. Hercules weighs more than three tons. Good try, Sandro, but Hercules gets the gold. Ah. Wow, more than three tons. Ooh, how many pounds would that be? If one pound is 2,000, I mean, if one ton is 2,000 pounds, how many pounds would three tons be? Did you say 6,000 pounds? What if Sandro shrinks? If he dwindles to less than a pound, we would measure his weight in ounces. There are 16 ounces in a pound. This bird weighs one ounce. If we zoom in a little bit for us, it says one ounce. This little bird weighs one ounce. One ounce. In our math book, we had a little, like a little baggie of paper clips that weighed one ounce. Now, the baggie of paperclip was one ounce. And remember, just one paperclip was like one gram. 
If you are weighing something even lighter, we would use fractions of an ounce. This spider weighs one-tenth of an ounce. I want to be as heavy as a hippo. <laughs> All right, remember that cups were used to measure volume. We still use them to measure liquids. Decide how thirsty you are, then check the chart. Jello is happy with a fluid ounce of milk. Remember the kitty's name is Jello. But after his workout, Hercules has a humongous thirst and he'll guzzle gallons. All right, so second graders, I think we're gonna pause here for today. Um, we will revisit this book when we learn more about all of these units of measuring volume or capacity. All right, so I think we will pause for today and the next time Miss Taylor will finish reading this story and we'll learn what happens as they continue going back in time with Marvelissimo, the mathematical magician. Second graders, have a wonderful winter break and I will see you again soon. Bye!